case anyone's listening for the very, very first time about this, there's a lot of opportunity to uh, meet good things, but there's also a lot of good things to choose from. So the first, uh, I'm just going to tell a few things around the ballot. Um, there's a question of what percentage of the budget should go to street resurfacing. Uh, there are traffic and public safety issues. There's a new residential street lights, what's the new repairs? Ashland Avenue shared new residential street lights at Ashland Avenue and Ashland Glenwood. And then there's a few more options on that. Uh, there's a, actually, there's nine total public safety factors in uh, Parks and environment, new play lots, new playground at City Park, uh, Albion Lakeside Park, Potomonument Park, deep water features, like uh, a sprinkler, a sprinkler, a sprinkler, a run through, and stuff like that. New drinking fountain, passion and Loyola products, the Own Beach Path Extension. Then in the art and innovation category, art equal Rogers Park, underpass mural project. Uh, it keeps going. I like this one. Leap out to 49th Ward. Trees for Rogers Park. And visitor information stations. Wow. Emergent sidewalk repairs. Metro station platforms. New shelter inventions. Bus stop benches. Shared bike lane on Clark and Howard Drew Wall. Okay, so the actual funding that we have for the Uh, 
uh, Todd Roy Preston, kind of retired dude now out there in Santa Barbara. Uh, and Mary Clara, I kept uh, told you this team, and I kept looking for your last name. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know a lot of Mary Clares. Well, it's great to have you. And you are on the road these days. You, uh, you have a wonderful book out. Uh, and I finally got a copy of it this morning called 100 Voices Americans Talk About Pain. And my understanding is you did this book um, right after Obama was elected president. You traveled around the nation, you talked to people, you got that vibe and feeling. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that and then we'll see what your latest project is. Well, by the time we got to the So, if you can highlight, you know, 
people are so hungry for that. We'd like to have to We to do something. I know. Uh, so, in the book, you, 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 uh, you talk to people about change and what it means to them. Do you get a sense about uh, how your days when you were talking scientific stuff before, including when you talked to astrology? Uh, uh, do you have any sense of how many people were in the Obama camp or were in the Clinton camp? Did you look for that or did you didn't even care about it? Well, what, no, you know, I didn't believe with that. And um, this is where, I mean, this is something that's important in research. I think historically we have not had enough um, talking to being the mediator of what we are perceiving. So we act like these researchers that we just disappear into the agenda. But the truth of the matter is there's always a person here. Or people. Right. And so even though my profound efforts is that speaking with this language, this broad range of stuff, yeah, I do have a particular attention to find the people who didn't don't think or see the world the way that I I still think that there are probably more folks in the area that would be in the same situation. The representation is excellent. I can say that I put in a lot of time. I can say I'm not so true. Well, no, there's this kind of great thing that happened in Texas where I was talking with two Baptist men that I ran into in the hospital shop. And um, I, I asked, I overheard them talking about my like, um, group. And uh, the, the older woman was advising the younger woman on how to, to move the, the youth from just talk about Christianity to actually living it. So I was, you know, I wasn't trying to reach it out. I heard that, and I asked her specific questions. Well, the older one, who was always, you know, they were just talking to me. And he said this, um, he said, it's easy to dehumanize people and then to respect them. That can turn it into carry each other off because we don't consider the others in the first place. For example, we don't go on very well in America right now. You're a Democrat, I'm a Republican. It's not the way it's considered a Republican.
make it full time and you wrap it around the country. Well, literally. So the South Coast. Yeah. So I'm heading back uh, across uh, Nebraska and Colorado and then we stop in Idaho also. Um, I love those states. I can't wait a lot to drive them around. Yeah. There's nothing like that. Where are you from? Well, I was born in Colorado and I live in Sweetwater up in West Texas. So I live in Colorado. I don't know if you know about this, but I don't know. I'm far from El Paso. Well, I'm down in Kirkville for most of my growing up, which is uh, near San Antonio and Austin. It's not far at all from the border, but everything's far from all that. We play the football, but I don't know how to play the football. I'm going to El Paso later. Yeah, it's not there. The other question, I'll give you the question. We've already spoken to you. We found more similarities than differences, essentially. Yes. How about this time? Well, this time I'm checking to see the extent to which it's possible for lots of people to become really, not just to, you know, saying this stuff and doing it, but to go with the time. And the rest of the country is able to explain stuff, but they're, they're well, not, not so able to do it. And so I'm curious if the interest is there for listening, listening across differences, because that means women are going to have And I had set myself up for that the way that I haven't even fully realized. So I would be an interview with somebody who said so many things I really didn't agree with. And I didn't take my you want to take the option of, I mean, it's pretty much done with you, you know, that usual option. Um, I continue listening, and every time I listen to crew in my responses, I heard things that were just so enriching and encouraging. We are really afraid of each other, and when we can draw back, even just a little bit, the wisdom that is there for us to draw out collectively is pretty astounding. So, in um, Jackson, Mississippi, I went to an African-American man who turned out to be a conservative talk show host with a lot of access to crime. Um, but, he, what, and one of the things that he said was, like, next week, this is mid-February, he said, next week, I'm getting together with a group of like-minded folks, and we're going to be coming up with a non-violent way of having a profound effect on this election. He's speaking as a conservative and as a Republican. What I didn't know, what you didn't know, was that he was talking about the people. So the original impulse then, this book was released on the 6th of October, the day that Alfred had built the story. So the original impulse, it seemed to me, when I was doing the release of the book, of both of these, is, listen to us. You know, we, we're not as stupid as you may think we are, or tell us we are, and we're not necessarily, you know, things will change uh, with regards to the two parties. But what I got from um, us was that we're not as um, divided as you tell us we are. But we can go there. It's so convenient to be afraid of each other with things. Well, they are Muslims. Such an important message, the message of. Um, how scary is that? By the way I look, by the way I live, by the way I'm straight or gay. Um, and this is what we all are talking about. We've heard this message. And a number of big legacies uh, shared with us. Just because you're gay doesn't mean you have to be liberal. Somebody called him down in San Francisco, a gay man, who was basically chomping at the bit to not be a sinner, not be a liberal, just because he was gay. Um, and you were talking about a black man in Mississippi who was starting to keep fighting. Right. Um, and you know, if we could get past, the, the most important word I just heard you say was fear. Fear of each other. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Everything was possible. Well, the challenge is to hold all of your person is at once. So it's important that I respect a person for who they are, their voice, their strength, or of a particular race, or of a particular age. That's who they are. So there is this group of identification. But if I think of nothing just based on how on my assessment of that, I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I just 
just tapped Katie on the leg because we have a lot of guests and we have only so much time. And I, I'm holding my tongue here. I mean, I really like this message in this book. On the other hand, I do think there are plenty of evil people uh, out there in the world who take strong political positions that really hurt other people. So I think that you cannot uh, negate the need for struggle, for challenge, and for uh, engaging in a serious uh, debate and arguing. And I don't know if everybody, it's not all about fear. I, I like the notion that people fear each other, but there are some. Well, I, I accept that that's true, but on the other hand, I know that it's not all about fear. Some of it is, you know, I'm clear on what I think about some stuff, and I know the position someone else has taken, and I will certainly work with them to, to change though, their opinion. Uh, and if they don't, I, I might write them off. I got a high school friend who, who just keeps coming across as a real racist. And he tells me to leave race out of stuff. And I say, in America, you can't leave race out. When the Republicans gave up, they were the good guys back in the Reconstruction era, and they gave up on Reconstruction, that really was the loss of the nation's soul. Uh, and we're still fighting this battle. So I, um, I like the thing about uh, we should be open to everybody, and I, I always embrace that. On the other hand, I'm not, uh, I'm not beyond uh, taking a stance and challenging something. I appreciate the power show every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. here at the Harley Cafe. There are some wonderful uh, copies of this wonderful book, and I feel really like the cover, all these license plates. Yeah. And uh, so come on out, and thank you for coming on. Let's have a big round of applause, and we're going to take a very short musical break. We're here at 887 to find the sound of life, and we'll be back with a young guy named Mike Flores, who is, uh, he's got some interesting stories to tell about the CIA and their use of art during the Cold War. We'll be right back. With more live from the house. I've been pretty excited to hear your rap 